The author says, There are those who profess to serve God while they rely or depend upon their own efforts to obey His law, to form a right character, and secure salvation. Their hearts are not moved by any deep sense of the love of Christ, but they seek to perform the duties of the Christian life as which God requires of them in order to gain heaven. Such religion is worth nothing. Jesus is faced with a major problem with the seventh church, the Laodicean church. If we were hot, hot, he would be happy. If we were cold, he would be able to deal with that. Because both hot and cold works are natural. If I'm experiencing the Holy Spirit in me, the natural results are hot works. When we choose to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit, then this corrupt sinful nature changes in performance. Guaranteed. Do you like guarantees? Let's read a guarantee about performance. Turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8 verse 7, Paul says, the carnal mind is enmity. The word enmity is a war. The carnal mind is enmity against God and not subject to the law of God. And even if it tries, it cannot. That describes me perfectly. 100%. I used to hate that verse. I used to hate Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is a deceitful thing and desperately incurable. That's what the Hebrew word means. Hopeless. Because I was focused on good works. And I thought I was doing terrific. Because I've been told, you must do this, you should do this, and you ought to do this, and you'll be in heaven. I said, okay. That's the deal. Let me out. But then, I understood the solution to my condition. And it's found in Romans 8, verses 9 and 10. Are you there? You are no longer under the influence of the flesh, but of the Spirit, and then the key word, I have. If so be it, that the Spirit of Christ dwells in you. Because if the Spirit of Christ does not dwell in you, I don't care what day you go to church. I don't care, ladies, how long you wear your skirts. I don't care how you fix your hair. I don't care what kind of a diet you follow. You don't belong to Christ. Now the solution verse 9. But if the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, then your sinful fleshly body becomes dead as to its condition. Why? Because the life and righteousness of Christ has been invited in by you, and now it takes over. Some well-meaning leaders of our church are saying today, that as a denomination, we used to be hot. Our pioneers sacrificed, they worked hard. But as we grew, we became complacent. And now, we have become lukewarm. So what we need now, I'm being told, is a revival. And then a reformation. And then they go to Revelation, turn to Revelation, chapter 2, and they attempt to prove their unbiblical speculation from Scripture. Revelation chapter 2. The very first church that Jesus addresses is the Ephesus church.
And look what he says to the Ephesus church in Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. But I have this thing against you, that you have left your first what? Five. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, and repent, and do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you what? Repent. repent. To apply Revelation chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 to the Laodicean church is a disregard for context and a distortion of the message itself. Jesus never, ever said to Laodicea, you were once hot, and now you're cold. Ever. Some of our scholars are now teaching that only justification is by faith. That righteousness or sanctification is by faith plus works. And they add, because we have a sinful nature, it is impossible on this earth to gain the victory or overcome the sin condition. And they defend their unbiblical speculation by distorting a statement that one of the founders of our church made when she was writing about works of the law. Let me read it to you. The author is writing about works of the law. Quote, our works of the law are so corrupted because of the channel of the flesh that only the righteousness of Christ can present us before God as being perfect. End quote. And then they say, there's the evidence that it's impossible to re live the Christian life. When she is not talking about living the Christian life, she's talking about the works of the law and the results of the works of the law. When the same writer is talking about works, hot works, works of faith, this is what she says. Quote, He who has not sufficient faith in Christ to believe that Christ can keep him from sinning has not the faith that will give him an entrance into the kingdom of God. End quote. Review and Herald, March 10, 1904. The title to my remarks this morning is, Is It Possible to Overcome? How many of you believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God? Amen. How many of you believe that Jesus is a reliable source? Amen. I'm going to read to you a scripture reading this morning again. John, chapter 16, the very last verse in John, chapter 16, verse 30. Three. If you have it in a red letter edition, you'll know who's saying this. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage. I have what? Some people say, well, that's kind of a vague statement. The word world is kind of vague. Can you be more specific as to what the word world is really talking about? Yes, we're going to get real specific. Turn to the far right, close to Revelation, 1 John chapter 2. This is the epistle. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. When you get there, say, ready? We're going to read one verse. Yeah. 1 John chapter 2. For all that is in the what? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the what? From the world. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. He overcame 
in our scripture reading this morning. John 16, verse 33. Is that good news or is that good advice? It gets better. We're going to close this morning by reading, going to Revelation chapter 3. And the very last thing that Jesus says to Laodicea. Why is this important? Because Laodicea is the last church that will be functioning when Jesus comes. And it is your and my incredible privilege and honor to be those people that are alive when Jesus comes. Amen. Verse 21. He who overcomes, Revelation 3, 21. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Is that something that you should be thinking about during the waking hours of each day at least once? So I want to ask you a question again. Do you believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus is a reliable source? Yes. Do you believe that it's possible to overcome the sinful flesh? Yes. If you do, stand up. And we're going to close our service by singing hymn number 335. God bless you.
in each of our lives. And we thank you for answering these requests because we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.